a very good morning good afternoon and good evening to all myself vibhav i welcome all of you to today's session of visual j forex in which we will be working with the indicator volume to look for the optimum trade entries for uh, the instrument of choice so we will see how we can take advantage of this uh, indicator to look for the optimum profitably higher probability trades so this is the setup so far in last two sessions i had explained to you how we can define the instrument of choice to be set as a default instrument we are working with the euro usd as the instrument of choice for this session afterward the position amount was defined at zero i have added these two volume indicator blocks with the loop back period of one and two respectively while the candle period remains same or hourly and uh, later on these four get historical candle blocks have been added with the each candle period being defined at one hour and these two are of 10 seconds each these four are calculation expression blocks to define certain variables which are helping us in setting the conditions and on the lower side this is the setup for the execution of the buy trade now today it's the turn of the sale side of the equation and it is going to be the mirror image of this uh, formation as we want our algorithm to be symmetric for that all we will need to do is uh, get these uh, seven if blocks reverse the condition you can see invert the condition and uh, then the trade command block will be added for the execution of the sale trade I will give you a brief refresher of what the logic is for the execution of the sell trade using this volume indicator. So let us now head to the JForex platform. This is the Euro USD chart defined for the hourly time frame, and we have these uh, quite uh, big moves happening in the Euro USD as we had CPI data, and after that release, we saw these uh, top sitter we move. We don't really have any momentum in uh, one direction. First, the move was on the lower side. After that, it reversed, and now it has uh, all given up the gains. So it is uh, almost close to where it it started. Not much uh, difference if we calculate it from the starting point when the data was released. So that's beside the point, and we turn our attention to the volume data and uh, one thing you can note here as well we had this move with uh, substantial moment uh, volume in first hour and momentum was also substantial but then in the next uh, hour the volume dropped again in the very next hour it uh, rose and then it uh, dropped substantially and after that we are seeing the underlying instrument is not really being able to hold the initial momentum and volume has dropped substantially so this is the logic for our algorithm also we need to make sure that there has been substantial move in opposite direction to what we are going for if we are going for a sale trade we will need significant momentum significant move to have happened on the higher side prior to the execution of the trade and once the initial momentum starts to fade we will be jumping in on that opportunity so that's what the logic is and uh, for that we will be comparing the 12 hours data we will consider the last hourly candle along with the penultimate hourly candle and then we will go back 12 hours in time and then we will consider that hourly candle which had closed 12 hours back we will compare the closing values of all these three candles and it should show significant rise and to make sure that is the case, we will be putting the condition that the closing values of all these three candles should be higher than the opening price and the closing value of the second last hourly candle should be higher compared to the hourly candle which had closed way last back. So that will ensure that uh, there has been significant move on the higher side in last way last and now that the momentum is fading with the volume moving on the lower side we can expect turnaround of sort to happen and that is the time when we will uh, start looking for the opportunities to go short in the euro usd so for that we will be comparing 
the volume data of last two hours, the hourly candle, last hourly candle, and the second last hourly candle. We will need the last hourly candle's volume to be lower compared to the second last hourly candle's volume. And uh, at the same time, the closing value should be higher for uh, last hourly candle as well as for the second last hourly candle compared to the opening prices. And uh, as I had uh, said earlier also, we will also compare the second last hourly candle close with the hourly candle which had closed 12 hours back. So that's the simple requirement for us. And then we will uh, not go for the trade straight away. Instead, we will put the order on the lower side. So whatever is the difference between the closing value and the opening value of the last hour, we will take that into account and we will put the order on the lower side by the same amount. So whenever the underlying instrument starts to drop below compared to the closing value of the last hour, the order execution will take place provided that the move happens within the first two hours as we will be putting in the order validity of two hours. So that has to happen within two hours after the order gets placed. Otherwise, that order will be cancelled by the system. Okay, so now we go back to the Visual J Forex board, which has been developed by the Ducoscopy Bank SA. Here, we need to define the sale execution price, which we will do after we define the conditions for the execution of the trade. So first, we will get seven of these eight blocks. One, two, Three, four, five, six, and seven. Seven is the number of blocks we had used while defining the conditions for the execution of the buy trade. So the same number of blocks are being used now. All right. So we take volume ten, and it should be lower compared to the volumes fourteen. So the first input less than second input. And we take the difference of these closing values of these three hourly candles. So we first compare the closing value and the opening value of candle 15. And then we will compare the closing value and opening value of candle 16. And same thing for candle 17 will be repeated. So I start getting the variables from auto created variables. Candle 15, candle close should be higher compared to the candle open. So first thing, first input should be greater than second input. Candle 16, candle close needs to be higher compared to the candle 16 candle open. So again, first input greater than second input and same thing for candle 17. Candle 17 candle close needs to be higher compared to the candle 17 candle open. So first thing, first input greater than second input. All right. And then we also want to make sure that price is for the underlying instrument have risen in over last 12 hours. So for that, we compare the closing value of candle 16 with closing value of candle 17. So candle 17, candle close. And candle 16, candle close. So here it is. First input greater than second input.
now all we need is to compare the 10 second historical candles closing values with the last hourly candle close so for that we take the closing values of candle 18 and candle 19 Candle 18, candle close, and candle 19, candle close. And compare it to the closing value of last hourly candle, which is candle 15. So this is going to be candle 15. Candle close Candle 18 is the last 10 second candle whereas candle 19 is the second last so we need to make sure that candle 19 candle close was lower compared to the candle 15 candle close whereas the last 10 second candle closed on the higher side so as and when the price starts to rise above the last hourly candle close the order will be placed on the lower side so when turnaround happens when finally the price starts to dip the execution of the order will happen that's the underlying logic So first input greater than second input is going to be a sale order sale stop now we have to define these input parameters sale execution price the default instrument will remain as it is so we need to get one more calculation expression block and the order will be placed exactly at the distance of the equivalent of difference between candle 15 candle close and candle 15 candle open so that difference will be deducted from last tick tick bid so this is going to be a1 minus a2 this is going to be two pips now i will define this variable as sale execution price so SCP in short and assign this to this input value SCP alright and I will join it on the lower side
trade amount I will change to 0 0.1 million slippage remains 2 pips top loss will be in risk reward ratio of 2 is to 3 so I will make 20 pips of stop loss and 30 pips of take profit it will be same as the buy side and order validity is going to be 2 hours we had defined it last time around so I will use the same variable so with this we have defined all the mandatory input parameters for this trade command block for the execution of the sell trade okay so as you can see it indeed looks like the mirror image of the buy side now i will color code it to make sure that iteration flow is going till the very end and indeed it is working fine from the first look that's what i'm seeing here so that's it from my side for today's session once you are done with this uh, formation do carry out testing on the historical tester using the jforex platform for which the link has been provided in the bio for further coverage of the market we have a lot of analytic content on the decoscopy analytical page we are also available on the facebook you can reach out to us there so thank you all for joining in. See you next time around. Till then, goodbye.